Welcome back. Today's topic is inelastic collisions. Uh, it's the first of two types of collisions that we're going to talk about. And inelastic, so if something is elastic, it bounces. If it's not elastic or inelastic, it doesn't bounce, or at least not so well. So, collisions. Anytime two or more moving objects make contact with each other, we call this a collision. Law of physics says you can't be in the same place at the same time unless, sorry about that, unless you're having a collision. Conservation of momentum is used to analyze all collisions. So if you were to be a crime scene investigator, or not a crime scene, but an accident investigator, you would be using conservation of momentum. Newton's third law is also useful. It tells us that if A pushes on B, B pushes back, same amount, opposite direction. Newton's third law. So here's a quick force diagram of the collision between two billiard balls on a friction-free surface. Okay, The only unbalanced forces occur from within the system. Those are internal forces. And if we remember from the last video, that means that momentum is conserved. Now, during most collisions, the time frame is very, very short. It's not instantaneous. There is definitely a, a time, a time element, but it's very short. And these forces are impulsive forces, meaning that they're very high, very large forces over a very short period of time. Okay, uh, the first type of collision are elastic collisions, sometimes called hard collisions. Uh, the objects don't deform and no kinetic energy is lost. Kinetic energy is conserved. Kind of like in billiards or pool. The balls are pretty close to having elastic collisions. Inelastic. Most collisions, in fact nearly all collisions, are of this form. Deformation occurs, which that means is the objects change shape during the collision and kinetic energy is lost. And a class of the inelastic collision is the perfectly inelastic, which means that the two objects stick together and move off as a single object following the collision. Okay, kinetic energy is lost and deformation still occurs. So Here's your multiple choice. Welcome back. So these perfectly inelastic collisions are the simplest type of collisions. After the collision, there is only one velocity. Since there's only one object, the two objects have merged into a single object that has a mass of their combined masses. Kinetic energy is lost. Where's that energy go? Well, think about it. Okay, explosions are the reverse. We looked at explosions in the last video. Explosions are basically the, the inverse of the inelastic collision. Okay, I'm going to just take you through this, trying to save some time. We have an 80 kilogram roller skating grandma colliding inelastic with a 40 kilogram kid, what is their velocity after the collision? How much kinetic energy is lost? So on the right hand side, the momentum before, okay, the kid is standing still, we have the momentum, the mass of granny, the velocity of granny, plus the momentum of the kid, which is zero. So 80 times six, okay, after, the mass of granny and the mass of the kid because they're combined, they're stuck together. And then we have the velocity of granny and the kid after. Okay. And we have momentum before, momentum after. We have to divide our 80 times 6 divided by 120, and that gives us four meters per second. That gives us the velocity of granny. And this should actually be velocity. I'm sorry, that 
despite our best efforts, that one slipped through. So that's supposed to be velocity of granny after four meters per second. In fact, that's granny and the kid are moving off together at four meters per second. Now, kinetic energy. Before, the only object that was moving and therefore the only object that had kinetic energy was granny. And she had 1,440 joules of kinetic energy. After the collision, it's one half the combined mass, granny and the kid, and the velocity or speed of granny and the kid squared. So one half, 120 times four squared, 960 joules. So we started with 1,440 joules. We ended with 960. So our change is negative 480 joules. We had a loss of kinetic energy of 480 joules. Where did that go? Well, it went into making Granny and the kid warmer. How did it do that? Well, some of that energy was transferred to their internal system, making their molecules jiggle. And jiggling molecules is another way of saying their temperature went up. Okay, here's another sample problem. We have a car, has a mass of 950 kilograms and a speed of 16 meters per second to the east. It approaches an intersection. Okay, 1300 kilogram minivan traveling north at 2100 meters per second, or 2100, 21 meters per second, approaches the same intersection. Can you guess what's going to happen? Yes, they're going to crash. They're going to crash, and in this case, they're going to stick together. What's the resulting velocity of the vehicles after the collision? This is two-dimensional. Okay, The momentum is conserved in each direction. That's important. It makes life a little bit easier. So the momentum in the x before is equal to the momentum in the x after. Momentum in the y before is equal to the momentum in the y after. And in this case, we have the car traveling in the x direction, and we have the van traveling in the y direction. So that's our momentum before. And in the after case, we have momentum in the y and in, in the x for them stuck together. Okay, so before the car has 15,200 kilogram meters per second in the x direction. And the van before has 27,300 kilogram meters per second momentum in the y direction. And after they have the sum of those two momentum. So the car is in the x, the minivan is in the y, the after is actually the vector sum of those. So to come up with the magnitude, we use our friend Mr. Pythagoras. Okay, and we find out that uh, he would have a momentum of 31,246 uh, kilogram meters per second after. Divide that by the mass, and that gives us the car and minivan system having a speed of 13.9 meters per second. And then the inverse tangent of the y, which is the minivan, divided by the x, which is the car, gives us 60 degrees or 61 degrees north of east, or just 61 degrees. OK? Not too bad. The two-dimensional problems are not really hard, as long as you remember that momentum in the x is conserved, momentum in the y is conserved, work those two problems separately, x and y, and then combine them at the end to come up with a total solution. And here's your free response. Good luck. We'll see you next time.